Let me know. <laughs> so, tip, no technical issues, hopefully, this week for Tier 5. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and a very good evening to you all. Welcome back to WR Tier 5 over on Xbox. We are here. We're reaching the midway point of the season at Monza. It's our second race in Italy this season. First, we were down in the, um, in the Emilia Romagna region of the country. Now, we're just north of Milan. I am joined today by Sideshow Samuel for this uh, for this race. Uh, just to introduce myself to Tier 5 quickly, of course. I'm Joseph, or Joseph F1. Um, delighted to be here. And in terms, you're, you're a bit of an expert with this. You know, you've been here weekly. You've got some company. And fortunately, without technical issues. So, all in all, good start. Of course, we were saying, we were saying before the stream, uh, uh, that it's quite nice to actually have someone to be able to talk to and bounce off of and have both of our voices on the stream this week. So it's going to be a great race as well. Italy, uh, we saw in the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix earlier this year, uh, earlier this season, that it was a great race there. And Monza, I think, is an even better track. We're going to see a lot of interesting strategies we're already seeing today. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good one. Absolutely, without doubt. Uh, the Slap Bus is the championship leader then by 32 points over Deer Hunter. And Deer Hunter, that man himself, is absent. So it's going to be a big opportunity today for Sam95F1 to move up into second place in the driver standings as well. We're looking at the likes of uh, BRT Wolf as well, who is... Uh, sorry, who I'm on board with. I was searching for him all over the place, but in fact, I'm on board with the driver in question, making his way now through Curva Dalla Roja. Yeah, just one point between Sam95 and BRT Wolf, and those two are 11 and 12 points respectively behind Deer Hunter. So they'll be looking both to get on the podium today in order to uh, undertake that fight for second place in the championship because the slap bust with three wins to his name did take the race win at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, as well as Austria and uh, the Netherlands this season. He's going to be looking for a fourth race win tonight and a second in Italy. Your thoughts on the slap bus's season so far? Oh, it's been near faultless this season. Obviously, he's he's had, he's had his issues, um, such as not qualifying well in Russia, which led him to only manage to pick up P4 in the end. And obviously last week as well, he only got, he fumbled it on this with the late safety car, which led him to only pick up eight points in the end. But as well, this is, like I say, three, we've already said, three wins this season, more than any other driver. Uh, he's half a win so far, actually. Um, but as well, we've, like you said, Deer Hunter is out of the race today, uh, which does really open up the gap. And Sam95, he, him and uh, BRT Wolf, that's going to be the big story of today. Who's going to be able to move up into that second place? Because you've got to imagine either one of them could be able to do so. And they've been, the last few races at least, have had very different trajectories. In that Sam95, I see, I see him as the sort of driver who can, even if he doesn't necessarily have the best pace on the weekend, can drag that car just by being safe and staying out of uh, trouble to being able, being able to drag his car up the field. Uh, but BRT Wolf, he's had a completely rotten luck, gone involved in a couple of incidents over the last couple of weekends, which has led to him having three pointless runs in a row, despite, after round three, leading the championship. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is championship contending form, what he had at the start of the season. Winning the first round of the season is a statement in itself, but then taking back-to-back -back second places in rounds two and three to now not scoring a point since needs a response today and a big one and I, I I see this personally with a lot of drivers you know they they can be a game for a period of time but just a hit of bad luck or or something can just tear their confidence tear their motivation for weeks on end so hopefully he's not going through that sort of phase I mean um, I wish I could have watched more of him this season because he really does seem like a really, really good driver. No assists here for a reason. The, uh, sorry, fourth place in the championship for a reason and provisional pole at the moment as well. So hopefully this is the start of an impressive riposte for him. Still not out of it with uh, eight races to go. Ooh, sorry, nine races to go in the season. 
including of course, this yeah. evening. Of course, he did get Sorry, pole position in Canada. He had he was incredibly fast, and if he had just kept the lead, as we see is Fantomasi, who's certainly one to keep your eye on today. Uh, with BLC Wolfo, he got if he had stayed uh, in first place, he would have controlled that race absolutely. But after the first safety car failure, it just it went on the power a bit too early. Maybe his tyres were a bit cold. And he just spun it, and that just was spelt the end of his race, and it was unfortunate for him because he really should have won that. But yes, and uh... sorry, did you have anything else oh, to say? Oh, no, uh, no, yeah, no, sorry, I was just going to say, uh, as, we, as I was just going to say, Esteban Tomasi, who I'm currently following, uh, uh, even though he's just completed his lap, he, he's not been in the last couple of races. But when we watched him in Austria, he was part of that. A pack of three or four drivers, which included the likes of Slapbus, BRT Wolf, and Alex Daegu as well, who's currently middling in P11 right now, but uh, in alternate strategy pole position, though. Um, uh, uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see what he's able to do. If he's able to come to more races, he's certainly going to be in with a shout of maybe making a late title charge. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Alex Daegu in uh, P11 as well, because. Uh, on Monday night in Tier 1, Zach Oates uh, took P11 and that crucial qualifying spot for a race that was ultimately uh, concluded with rain. So it was completely perfect safety car timing for him and, uh, you know, that, that 11th place can win you a race just like that, you know, if you, if you keep it clean and uh, take your mediums. Uh, with pace and obviously longevity as well so that could be very very important keep an eye out on that AMG Chris F1 just one one thousandth uh, behind Alex Daegu at this moment in time it's looking really really tight at the top just over a tenth uh, in the top three the slap bus looking to improve soon enough though this lap won't be it he's invalid on this occasion with nine minutes into the qualifying session at Monza and still many question marks over this pole position as the slap bus goes again yeah two push laps in a row I mean the there's not much tire around Italy so you can get away with it so long as you've fueled the car up enough and the downforce is low enough so where you should be able to have enough ERS as well for two flying laps uh, speaking of ERS, Slapbus is someone who we do typically see having uh, a great ERS management, so that'll be something to watch out for in a race, as he typically has great race pace, even if it's not always there in qualifying. But uh, I do... So I mean, I do what, sorry. <laughs> no, I was going to say, it's not been particularly tidy, uh, this lap. He did clunk the sausage curb a little bit, going through turn five on the exit of the Della Roger chicane it did claim purple in the first sector this is going to be crucial down towards Ascari would he be purple again not quite only two tenths up and that as it stands won't even put him on the second row so still a long long way to go for the slap bus in this session something that I find interesting I do want to ask you having a uh experience for tier one race on monday is that i'm seeing everyone's trying to set their times on the soft tires uh and i just want to ask you how important how powerful even is the alternate strategy there around here uh well obviously it does depend on the weather i have not seen it with my own eyes this evening so uh, i wouldn't be able to tell you quite as i'm going to interrupt that for a moment as brt wolf powers into the one minute 19s really impressive stuff there from brt wolf and his repost seems to be beginning this evening and uh, obviously it's not one just yet because back to the alternate strategy um it's well, the thing is with monza it's it's the drs uh, trains that really don't separate the the tire deltas that much i mean you can sit on the medium tires in a pack full of soft runners quite easily um should you stick with them in the opening few laps so you've obviously got that drs advantage um if you can do that if you can gain positions off the start it is very very easily a race winning strategy but it all comes down to the start in my opinion because I think that turn one notorious, at least in public lobbies, for being mm. a quite a difficult one to navigate, especially if you're in the midfield. Uh, do you see that being an issue potentially in, the, in this race here? Well, 638 metres it is from pole to turn one and speeds of up to around 
200 miles an hour before you get there and with no line on um yeah it, it does take a lot of preparation you do need to perhaps practice your turn one braking zones that's definitely one of the key elements of Monza it is so so difficult at the start it's going to be two maybe three abreast in some areas awareness is so key if you can back out of something you've got to do it there's no point taking a risk with uh, the chicanes the three around the circuit that uh, follow each other up so yeah I, I, I wouldn't be taking any risks that's for sure and I'm sure the tier 5 drivers are mature enough uh, to know that of course, we do. We do. Use, we do see uh, incidents from time to time. It's never out of any sort of uh, maliciousness. It's just. Uh, it's, it's just a case of two into one. Sometimes, uh, it just doesn't go. And especially with this turn one, it can. It's, it just goes from such a wide track into such a narrow track. But it's. It should. It should be okay. I think we don't, never. Usually, we don't usually get many two, turn one incidents here. There's something I'm surprised about my, uh, myself at this moment in time is just the positioning of Alex Daegu. He's now down all the way in 16th. And he, uh, I've been given what we know of him this season. He's just, he's usually a lot higher up. Yeah, and well, that best time is still set on the medium tyres. He's got about 1.6 seconds to the top of the sh time sheets. I'm wondering if he's going again here, but he can... Uh... Yeah, I think he's likely to pit. Yeah, he is. And uh, he's going to change those tyres. But it does leave him under a lot of pressure, of course. Being down there in P16, yet to do a full flying lap on the soft compound of tyre. It's going to be difficult for him to overcome this. Um, no matter how much the tyres uh, can gain. It's really just about mental strength. Keeping it calm. Knowing your limits. Especially, especially on a low downforce circuit. You really can't be pushing corners like Ascari too hard. As you may be able to with high downforce. It's really just not quite the same. You can cut Ascari as well. You can run wide on the exit. Hit the very, very intimidating sausage curbs on either side of the track. So it is a challenge. Monza, although it is in fact 83% full throttle, it requires a lot more than just pedal to the metal. Of course, it's a, it's, it's a very tricky balance of knowing where the limits are and being able to push to the limits themselves. Uh, something that I always uh, find notable is the bump on the inside of the Del Rosa chicane. It's so easy mm. to get caught out on that and then just completely ruin your lap. Uh, and just the track limits as well around here. If you're pushing as hard as you can, it's so easy to inv invalidate. Maybe not as hard as uh, easy as say the likes of Canada, but it's still quite an easy one to do. So, taking a ride now down towards Ascari on board with ILR Bibin. Where's he going to break? About 75 meters out. Very neat and tidy through there. there. Very. Very nice from ILR Bibin in the Alfa Romeo as he makes his way now down towards the renamed Parabolica, the Curve Alboreto now, of course, but both works as uh, as far as I understand with the league racing community. Round in the final corner then, ILR Bibin coming up to the line. It's going to put him P9. Certainly not safe inside that top 10 at the moment. Still two and a half minutes to go. Whether he's fueled up for another one though, I don't think he is. Considering I don't think his DRS was open down the straight. Unless he's using this lap as a recharge. I don't think we're going to see much more than that man. No, and but it's one of those things where you've really got to try and have your lap be done at the latest possible time because that's when the track will be at its absolute grippiest even though it's maybe i don't know if it's as uh as significant in on shorter qualifying as it is on full qualifying but uh, track evolution still is very much a thing in qualifying and you want to be setting that lap as late as you can so that all the rubber is laid down and you get the optimum grip so i think that might be part of what of his thinking right now yeah, we're now starting to see multiple drivers on their final flying lap. AMG Chris F1 going through the Della Roger chicane now missing the bumps of both curbs. That was very nice from that shot, that's for sure. Into Lesmo 1, now onto Lesmo 2, also known as Turn 7. 
perhaps slightly a bit slower than the first one. It's a little bit off camber, but DRS open. Downhill, down the straight, underneath the famous Monza banking. Once uh, part of the Formula 1 race, thankfully not anymore, uh, for very obvious safety purposes. But through Ascari, it's looking good so far for Chris F1. Bit of traffic in front of him, but I think they're in the same boat, preparing, awesome. starting the final lap. Well, I could, t I could tell you one thing, it, that bus won't be improving on his lap time. He had a very hairy moment out of the uh, uh, first... Uh, First Lesmo, uh, he's, he's basically already abandoned his lap. Wherever he can get round in enough time to set one more flyer, that's up for uh, that's up for debate right now. Uh, but as things stand, he's going to be at best P3. Checkered flag not yet out. AEM Joran going P14. AMG Chris F1 went P8 there. We're starting to see more and more drivers head around now. And that's BRT Wolf. And that's BRT Wolf improving on his pole position time to a 119.894. Very impressive stuff. The slap bus round in the final corner and he aborts into the pit lane. So the championship leader, fourth place at the moment as Artem goes up into P3 and solidifies a second row position at this moment in time. But Itzban Tomasi uh, gets a bit hairy on the exit of the Della Rocha chicane down to Lesmo 1. It didn't look too hooked up either. So he was almost a tenth up. He's definitely at risk of undoing oh, that hard work and he does so with an invalidation. Goodness me. And yeah, still seven thousandths of a second up. There's certainly loads more time in that lap. Huge crash from Nomad, certainly putting FE TK dab. I don't know if I've said that quite right. It does take some getting used to, that's for sure. <laughs> He's round at the final corner now. Can he disrupt these front two rows of the grid? Just one one hundredth for the second behind the slap bus at the moment. That's all he needs for the second row. Is it going to be enough? No, he doesn't improve on his previous best by about half a tenth. And I think that is going to slowly but surely round off this qualifying session. We've got Enrikic crossing the line next up to P9, displacing his teammate, MG Chris F1. Has 9-10 at the moment. Uh, that was Alex Daegu, only 14th for him. And that is going to be that. Yeah, so a mix of fam like familiar faces up top, but also some familiar faces a bit further down in the grid. I mean, we, we have seen the likes of AVS Fan and Alex Degu and Duran as well try and fight higher up, up the sharper end of the grid this season, but haven't really hooked the lap up together in the qualifying. But you know what we're saying? Points are only scored on the Sunday, so a lot, a lot of work to do over the next 28 laps. And um, that's a good thing that you don't have to wait until Sunday because it's <laughs> just in a few minutes' time. <laughs> oh, well, we, we've if been you want to wait for Sunday, Bahrain Grand Prix. Wow, that is closer than you think. Oh, no, I can't wait for that. <laughs> but what it's going to be such a great day. More. Yeah, but what I can't wait for even more in this moment is to get away with this race in just a few moments' time in Tier 5 of WIR. Absolutely. I just want to pick out Alfa Romeo starting 11th and 12th. They're going to have that alternate strategy uh, should they choose it. So that's going to be really interesting to monitor their progress. Haas currently bottom in the Constructors' Championship qualify uh, 9th and 10th. And Aston Martin currently 8th in the Championship qualifying 7th and 8th. Bit of a Noah's Ark 2x2 two two style there uh, on the fringes of the top 10. Um, interesting. Uh, certainly very important for... The whole battle's going on down there. There is places to gain, excuse me, still in this championship. So it's going to be a great inter-team fight down there. I'm really interested. Of course, it might opens up uh, the strategy game as well. If uh, uh, having both of those drivers available to you uh, when you're fighting against the teams that have actually ended up qualifying just ahead or behind you, it's going to play such an important role. If you lose one of those men uh, or women early on, it's it's going to make it harder for the other driver to not get undercut or be threatened with uh, just being sandwiched in between on strategy. So it's going to, it's, it opens up a lot of possibilities here. Absolutely. The slap bus. P4 then. And for a driver that hasn't finished below sixth all season, which is an impressive stat, in itself, he won't be too worried. He knows for sure how to cope 
uh, in this scenario. A two-time pole sitter this season, a three-time race winner. It's not over for him. Perhaps just uh, prioritising the setup for the race as well. well. We'll never truly know. And that's all part of the, uh, the great thing about Formula One league racing. It's uh, never really obvious... Uh, what people are doing, particularly uh, up in esports and uh, stuff like that. So that is always uh, a thing to note as well. We've had four different race winners this season, most recently Callum G. Could we add a fifth name to the winners list in WOR Tier 5 this season? What do you think, Samuel? It's certainly a possibility. If I see that happening today, I mean, if there's ever a race, I mean, Italy... Uh, both in game and real life does throw up a lot of um, strange and unique sort of opportunities for drivers who maybe don't necessarily always get the opportunity to win a race. So I'm going to put it on the line. I'm going to say, at the end of this race, after 28 laps, I'm, my, I'm going to put a bet, I'm going to put a prediction out and say, and hopefully I'm not putting a commentator's curse on him. I'm going to say Isvan Tomasi to win his first race this season. Yeah, I can back that, really. Uh, he picked up a podium back in Austria, a second place. Only one point since. So, like many others, that man will be looking for a resurgence here at Ferrari's home Grand Prix as well. Um, you know, if this was real life, we'd only be seeing red in those grandstands. But it's a bit more diverse <laughs> in the Formula 1 game, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I've, I've seen a bit of yellow... Has to be. Bit of orange, bit of yellow. I see a, uh, a green that looks reminiscent of an Aston Martin shirt there. So, got the uh, got the Aston Martin represent. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I say it's diverse, but I look at the Paddock Club up there, and there's only white people. What is going on? I don't know. I mean, go on. come on. I mean, you've got to investigate that. <laughs> Codemasters, it's not good enough. But anyway, formation lap, jokes aside now. 3.6 mile formation lap to come. A look at the strategy. Most notably, Alfa Romeo have split theirs. ILR Bibbing go for the softs. Edited Fawn going for the mediums. JJ going for the softs. Alex Daegu has gone for the mediums. AM Giant on the softs. RJ on the mediums. AVS Fan 96 on the softs. And a Dynamo Dan and... Bortorito, I love that name already, and that's the first time I've said it ever, uh, on the mediums as well. So it's a massive mixture outside the top 10. What do you think that will mean for the race star in terms of the contention for uh, positions down there? Well, oh, it's, it's, it's going to be, I mean, it's, if, there's ever, if there's ever a race where the difference in compound really affects your start, it's at Monza. Because the softs just offer you just that slight, slight, ever so slightly more grip on the start to be able to just jump one or two people. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the likes of Duran uh, just go up to about P12, maybe P, uh, P13 by the, uh, by, the, by the time we get into turn one. Just because he'll have a much, he'll have a better launch. As we see Sven Tomasi in the background just knock off the uh, board, uh, marking boards there. But, but, but you see, speak about the split strategy of Alfa Romeo and that's exactly what having the two teammates so close to each other allows you because that now puts pressure on both the Aston Martin drivers and the Haas drivers who they are fighting against at this moment in time uh, because it allows one driver just to stay on the regular strategy it pitted around packing up 10 or 11 but then it allows the other to try and get the overcut and then be faster towards the end of the race as well fully agree with you very very nice insight there to uh, what we might expect but we're forming up the grid now tension rising it is very very exciting we're reaching the midway point of the season no deer hunter unfortunately to uh, spring that championship spirit into life here at Monza today but the slap bus has work to do to extend that gap even more here we go then 19 drivers all forming up. One Alpine at the front, one at the rear. It's, it's an Alpine sandwich today. <laughs> one big Alpine sandwich. And for a circuit <laughs> opened in 1922, 100 years later, we're racing virtually at the Temple of Speed in WOR Tier 5. Waiting for the lights.
The circuit may be of temporal speed, but from light certainly aren't. <laughs> oh, oh it's, it's, it's the waiting game. It's ruined my uh, my little introduction. <laughs> I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping it's not a gl uh, not one of the glitches oh, that happened. Is it, it might be. Fawn? It might be a glitch, unfortunately. It always gives an opportunity for me to to try the introduction again. This could be a restart. I've never usually seen these issues rectified, and if so, everyone's tyres are going to be very very cold, and that's not what you want going into the first corner at Monza. That's all I've got to say about that. Uh, I think we'd see oh a 20 cup high on Lapa Fouts cases. We're just going to be waiting on, uh, just going to be waiting on the Discord recently, uh, just re really, just to see if there's yes, any updates on that end. That, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, there's calls to restart, uh, I'm seeing immediately. Uh, Drivers are starting to leave. Oh! Yeah. Yeah, I think mine's just crashed as well. Yes, in the process of crashing, there we are, it is crashed. <laughs> Apolo apologies. And we, and we thought we were going to go away with no technical issues today. Ah, oh, <laughs> the, monkey, the monkey's paw has uh, taken, uh, rolled down one finger. Apologies about that, everyone. The stream still should be up, but uh, it wouldn't be a Code Masters League race without one of these moments, would it? Um... Honestly, uh, hopefully. Honestly, honestly, this is one of the biggest things for me with the new with the new F one twenty two game. Just fix these issues. Online has so many of these sorts of issues where there's desyncing, there's like you can't join, rejoin during a formation lap. Otherwise, this sort of glitch happens. It just needs to be sorted out. And there's there's a much better run by. Uh, oh, I can't. It's, it, I'm, I apologise, but I forgot to whoever it was that made the run. It was at Italy, actually. I remember early in the year. I think it was PSGL, um, where they just there was desync issues there, and just. Oh yes, yes, George Morgan. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yes, I, me I remember. Him. It, it, it still remains true because even even though this isn't necessarily the same issue, it's it's still frustrating to have to deal with this sort of thing. On a near weekly basis. To be fair, I think that uh, that cry from George, obviously in a good way, crying in this in this context, it needed to happen. It was in front of a huge audience in terms of league racing, a couple of thousand people, um, and obviously after that as well, you had all that controversy regarding the esports builds and the disconnection from league racing, and all of that kicked off. It was a it was a bleak period for for the game and its cycle. I think a lot of people were very upset those uh, those few weeks about the whole thing. But, yeah, it's great that you actually bring that up because I was uh, mentioning this uh, a little bit earlier on in a, in a different Xbox party about the whole league racing meltdown thing. It was it really was uh, a strange time. Right? I, don't, I don't think really anyone wanted to continue until they kind of reverted things in a way. Of course, and 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 the fact, that, and for me as well. I mean, obviously, there's certain issues like that. The one that uh, was prevalent in that race, which have been looked at a lot more and have taken a lot more focus. It's these small glitches that we've seen, even even in last year's game, they exist. And I remember this happening in a few races last year on F1 2020. It's it's it, it still it still needs to be talked about because if people don't talk about these specific issues, like. Like you, did you like if you saw if I don't know if you saw the leaks the other week from quite a reliable um there was quite a reliable leaker that said about there being uh like sports cars and uh being in the new game and I'm thinking mm. to myself we shouldn't be adding features like sports cars until we fix fundamental issues such as this not being able to rejoin un under the formation lap that's that's absurd. I mean, I don't think I've heard anyone ever say they want. F1 life sports cars in a Formula 1 video game. You've got Formula 2. Is it polished? No, not really. It's just drive a Formula 2 car in a race. That's it. You know, it's not really connected to the whole career mode thing. Why would we want F1 life? 
what is that? What? <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I th- it's it's going to be a, it'd probably be a fun novelty for about a couple of hours, but it fix the fundamental online issues. Add add a certain like more depth to the career modes and. You just keep people well, that way. You keep people happy throughout the year, and then you can work on adding features such as sports cars and classic tracks. Like, because otherwise, we're we're just here right now, I and mean, we're, um, we're having a go at a game we don't want to be having a go at. Couldn't agree more, to be honest. Uh, what I'm more interested in now, though, is whether <laughs> there is going to be a new lobby at all. I don't fancy waiting until nine o'clock, which. Is what the challenges guys did yesterday. <laughs> they only started like after eight o'clock, and it was meant to start at seven. So I, I... that was an hour of my life waiting for the challenges stream to start because I'm sad. It is. It's weird because I've not actually seen a, 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 a formal decision be made. I, I, no, I think Bibbins is the coordinator, so. Uh, yeah, mm. Bibbins the coordinator, and he said that there's a restart needed. He's currently restarting his Xbox, so that's probably why we're waiting at the moment. But yeah, no, I mean the, the Challenger series obviously on at the moment. Uh, I mean, wouldn't recommend going over because I mean, if you want to stay here, because there's going to be an absolutely phenomenal race here, knowing what we know of these drivers here. But in the meantime, maybe just a quick peek. But... There's people restarting their Xbox now, so I think, <laughs> I think, uh, crash people's Xboxes completely at this point. Also, I've never seen that happen. Like uh, as much as we've, uh, uh, more uh, maybe more accurately, more of a, uh, uh, more that I've just had a go <laughs> about certain uh, glitches in the game. I've never actually seen that particular glitch crash the game. I've seen it just like crash the lobbies, but not forget the entire game itself on multiple people. Hmm. And it's a shame as well because it, it, it's a shame we got to wait so long because now, I mean, now the anticipation's kind of building because that was a very good qualifying session. Got got a few people, got not a mixed up grid, but. Uh, obviously, slap bus down the order. It's Fantomasi in second place. Uh, BRT Wolf on pole for second week running. You just got all these storylines that we need resolving. Another thing as well is uh, it leaves the top ten uh, drivers with fresh tyres as well. So that mm. would be uh, very crucial in terms of uh, being able to optimise the the strategy. Uh, obviously, still the bottom ten can choose whatever tyres they want. They've they've got a second chance now if they want to to go onto the mediums or, or switch to the softs. But now, do you think maybe with the with the fresh tyres, um, more people will go for for the mediums as to perhaps I don't really know what the word is. Kind of mitigate um, that advantage that the top ten have just gained. Yeah, it's 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 a difficult one if you're if you've started on the mediums because, like you said, it is an advantage. It's I mean, one lap might not seem like a lot, but at this sort of level, when you've got such fine margins for error, it's one lap of performance is everything. So so it's 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 real beggar's belief really as to what's going through the minds of the people who are going to start on the mediums right now as to what they can do really. Do they go an extra lap longer just to try and do what would effect, like be the effective undercut for uh, if they're starting on soft? So do they stretch it one lap longer because they will have, they'll be starting on, uh, they'll be going on to fresh softs, sorry. Which they, they might, which to be fair, they might not have actually done. Like we were focusing on the soft starters having the advantage, but you've got to think that there are some of those medium uh, medium starters that, whilst they're starting on mediums, they maybe ha- had used up all of their softs, so they're going to be having fresh softs as well. Yeah, I can't seem to join at the moment. 
I'm trying to join off Alex. I'll, but... uh, I'll send you an invite. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. That's right. Yeah, we, we filled back up quite quickly, so we should be able to get underway pretty soon. Obviously, got to sort out the grid customer. Uh... The grid, yep. And I don't think we're really in for any rain today, so fortunately, so we don't have to worry about that having been compromised. And, and I see deer hunters in the lobby now. Will deer hunter be joining on the back of the grid now? For this race, that's going to be an interesting thing to look out for, because if he does, he oh. could, he, could he fight his way through the grid? Because he's, cause he's definitely, if he does end up in the race, he's definitely going to be up on the back of the grid. Because he didn't say that. Well, how? Deer Hunter arriving on the scene, and suddenly the championship spirit is back. I just that's what that adds to see. That adds even more layers to this race. I, 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 am really, I am really just genuinely excited to watch this because these guys don't know how to put on a boring race. And seeing the likes of Deer Hunter all going to try and do his darndest to start from the back, like do a last or first challenge. <laughs> Could we see it happen? Who knows? Right? You have to stay tuned to find out, guys. I agree. Uh, speaking of staying tuned... Uh, if you've got anything to say in the live chat, any predictions, any any random topic, you know, uh, get it in there. I'm I'm looking. We'll see if we'll see if anyone's about. I mean, I must also remind myself that two hours ago I was I was popping down some rough notes for tier three, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, who are these people? No offence, of course, but it, I'm just not used to com- these guys. <laughs> it's there is a completely different atmosphere about every tier, and that, that's one of, that's actually one of the great things about the league. Mm. Um, Somebody who's been kind of up close to tier one, tier three, and tier five all in the same week, you do get an idea. So it's always uh, something of note. Yeah. What What is that? What would you say is the main differences then, uh, when it comes to these guys and the tier one guys? Would you say, in, like just in general, not necessarily even in speed or what have you. Uh, well, I, I do have a few tier one drivers on my friends list, and it's the fact that I can come on Xbox at four o'clock, look again at eight o'clock, and they'll still be doing the exact same multiplayer session with the same people. <laughs> <laughs> it's just genuinely there is just it's a lot more uh, mental strength in a way because obviously tier one requires so much commitment. It's it's a route. So it's a route to PC. It's a route to the top esports teams. It's it's a route to to beyond that. Whereas tier five, it's it's it just seems like an acceptance. You know, we've got a it's a great large roster of no assists drivers, um, all looking to climb up the ladder. Because I've seen drivers climb up the ladder, and I've seen drivers do great things. So, you know, looking at these drivers here. You know, one day it could be any of these guys. I mean, Alex Daegu, uh, a couple of years ago, was, what, t- tier two, I want to say. He was he was right up there, and it's, it's it's a lot more casual, for obvious reasons. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it, it's a different style of racing as well, because I, as phenomenal as it is just to watch the precision of those tier one guys... It, I mean, there's, there's only rare, only ever sometimes a risk of sort of jeopardy in a way. And obviously I'm not saying any of these guys are bad drivers or even mistake friends, but you do see one or two more, especially around tracks like Canada where it's, the barriers are a lot closer. But you maybe do see sometimes people pushing a bit too hard and then ending up coming off a little worse for wear. And that creates a sort of different racing in that you've got still got to be prepared for a potential safety car to come out or two and try and dictate strategy out around that. 
Yeah, of course, as well. And when you consider tier one, you know, there's there's two, three engineers, or it's a very closed environment uh, in terms of, you know, you've got your esports team in there, and they're trying to make things happen and support you to do <laughs> perhaps the silliest of things, but <laughs> we'll see. <sighs> but, you know, tier five, as an example, a lot more independent, you can see that. And, I mean... It, these tiers go obviously a lot under the radar based on the fact that obviously WOR now on all three platforms I remember a few years ago when it wasn't and I was uh, still commentating so it's crazy how times have kind of advanced as well and yeah it's a, it's a great perspective to have on everything in my opinion of course especially with WOR just being I mean, you argue, I mean, I'd say definitely the biggest cross-platform uh, league on Formula One, uh, biggest, arguably biggest league at all you know, on any platform. Uh, it, it gives, I mean, the size and scope of it. I mean, if you if you join in on the Discord or whatever and just see the community, it's just it's insane just how much work and dedication go, goes into ensuring this all goes smoothly. And the same back for back in the day as well. With uh, I say back in the day, I was, it was only just last year that I was uh, racing in there until it uh, dissipated. But TSRL as well, but uh, back then, yeah, as well. was yeah. just, that was a big one as well. Obviously now PSGL, how mm. how many tiers it's got on PlayStation? I don't even know, but it is an <laughs> absurd number. Absolutely <laughs> mental. I think there's at least seventeen. Yeah, and, and it is as well with just with leagues as well. Just it's insane the sort of talent you can see getting cultivated. Like you mentioned, um, you mentioned uh, Alex Davey having previously been in Tier Two, uh, but I'm also seeing the likes of BRT, like BRT will slap bus, um, it's Fantomasi drivers that I didn't really know too much of at the beginning of the year, but. Uh, uh, I've grown just to see how much talent and speed that a lot of these drivers have, and they could be really be making the case of knocking on the doors of higher t- tiers in the future, and then maybe even push on further to that in future games. Fully agree. Um, there was something I was going to say. What was I going to say? I don't know. I've forgotten now. Damn it. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. I had, I had something in mind, and I've just dissipated it from the mind maybe it will come back before we start the race but we are now loading back in it's been what 15 minutes no maybe not 15 minutes is actually i think it might have been about 15 minutes now you know but yeah i think it might have been either way a great conversation absolutely i mean um, about league it, racing it's it's all it's funny how much easier f- uh, filling airtime is uh at, around the lulls um when when you've got someone to talk to, I I dread to fear what I would have had to do if uh, if it was just on my own. If I had to do another solo com today and this happened, I'd probably still be oh, on yeah. that rant yeah. about the game. I mean, I have to pro- pro- probably uh, share my tier one experiences this week. You know, I'm I was lucky enough to work with Warder, a brilliant commentator, and you know does a brilliant job with the streams and everything that goes on as well but suddenly his audio disconnects through no fault of his own and there's me having him in my ear going you have to carry on by yourself it's <laughs> it is a, it is it is genuinely very difficult because then you find yourself saying the same sort of stuff and it's like but just you know jewel chilled out it's nice um i do like it so yeah, it's, it's it's a weird one to like kind of just pull back the curse of being a commentator. It's uh it's very weird in that this is the only experience I I I mean I get each week because even even though in my in my day to day I'm I'm actually a broadcast journalist student. It's like I, I don't you don't get taught how to do commentary, so it's really weird to go into this and kind of just be doing it on the fly really. So. It's, 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 but at the end of the day, it's all about having good fun, I think. I agree. Like, I mean, nobody really up and up and down these tiers does it for any sort of money. They do it for enjoyment. 
um, whether it's tier 1 or tier 11, if that's even a thing anymore. Um, there, was a, there was a tier that merged. Yeah, I think it was tier 11. Right cause, uh, cause then, yeah, because I think there was oh, a, yes, yes, I'm yeah. tier 10, and uh, I think we had a couple of new drivers this week, So, uh, well, yeah, last week I've even. I just checked on the spreadsheet. Tier 11C, so I assume that means closed. I don't see what else it would be. Yeah, because I know tier nine um, uh, merged with us last year, <laughs> or merged with us and tier eight, I think. So well, it's weird that we keep getting <laughs> the tiers around us keep uh, having to get merged, but we don't <laughs> end up having anything like that, that. Yeah, that that was also a big point of discussion. Uh, PSGL released uh, uh, a very, I, I don't know, it felt a bit insulting to some people, but it was like, oh, if you if you just leave or don't show up for for school reasons or whatever, you'll just be banned for five months. And obviously the lower tiers are where those less experienced younger people are likely to be concentrated. So, yeah, obviously that's more likely to happen down there. Mm. But... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame because, I mean, it, for most of it, for most of these, even at the higher end, it's just a hobby. It's just fun at the end of the long work day. So it's just uh, that sort of attitude. It's a bit, a bit weird. It's not quite equivalent. But so, so something, something I want to ask you about, just if just to try and get back on focus before, on the race before it, it starts. Uh, do you think there's a this restart poses a risk to anyone uh, to have forgotten to apply their uh, yes? Their I, I I do think it's inevitable. I don't think I've ever gone a restart without seeing someone struggling and then saying. Oh, I forgot my setup after the race. But yes, we are now starting to see more drivers apply those medium tyres. Um, it's a lot less alter. Uh, it's a lot less alter alternate. There's the word uh, down there. Uh, yeah, a few more medium runners. Deer Hunter crucially going for the medium tyres, and a slap bus, his championship rival, who is 32 points behind, starting fourth. Deer Hunter in 20th. I mean. With Deer Hunter, it's added uh, another element of excitement to this one as well. I, I, I wonder what's going to be how it's going to be classified in the team's championship if he does score uh, points today. Because he is a full-time Alpine driver, but it, because Bartorito had taken up the second Alpine seat uh, as a reserve today, I mean, it, is is that going to? Is Boris points going to count if he scores points, or is it going to be Deer Hunter's points to count towards LP? Who knows? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, that will be definitely negotiated uh, after the race, but usually what I've seen is, um, if, you know, if there's an incorrection with the car, it doesn't really matter. The points just uh, are assigned to the full-time driver's team, but... Yeah, I'm sure that's not going to be too much of an issue. It's really the uh, the drivers' championship. Deer Hunter will be thinking about um, closing in on, or of course his uh, teammate on pole position. Uh, if he was in an Alpine today, but he's not, so he doesn't have to worry about what he does as such. I am a little surprised to see Deer Hunter on the mediums, though. I would have expected him to go aggressive at the start, trying to make up as much positions. As he possibly can, knowing that his title, title challenges are so far ahead of him. Uh, and starting at the back of the grid, yes, he'll have the faster car at the end of the race, but he's got everything to do. And having slightly less grip than some of the cars around him might not help him at the start. Well, here we go again then for a circuit opened in 1922. It's a pleasure to be racing 100 years later on the F1 game in WR Tier 5. It's the Temple of Speed and all 20 cars are now in position. With second place man in the championship, Deer Hunter, joining us. We've got a championship spirit about this race again. Five red lights on ahead of the drivers. The lights are out and we're underway with a good start from BRT Wolf. He will look to pull over surely to try and defend his need into turn one. What a great start from the slap bus. He's making it three wide into the first corner with a Ferrari in the middle. And Williams on the outside. The slap bus round the outside at turn two trying to get ahead of Itzvan Samasi. Uh, a driver tipped 
for the win by yourself this evening, Samuel, but he's up into third place. Artem just in front of him. Can he get a ahead of the Williams? This will be crucial if he wants to extend his lead in the championship today. Artem is forced wide by, well, really, no, the no fault of Slapbus. He's just really forced him into that... Uh, Psychological error, he runs straight off the track, Slapbus says thank you very much, and he's up to P2, and further down the order, we've got JJ having a spin, we've got Dynamo Dan off as well, but crucially, Deer Hunter up to 13th, what a what start. A, what a opening lap, like, just as you are saying, just, he's nearly the lead medium runner, if he could overtake Alex Zager here, that's an unbelievable first lap from 20th up to 13th in one lap. I mean, that's like Kimi Raikkonen at Portimao in the 2020 in real life. Just yeah. Insane sort of race path they're showing by Deer Hunter. Now, my, my questioning of his medium uh, choices are very, very poorly aged already. Artem oh, and Sam 95. <laughs> Look at this, they're having a great battle, wheel to wheel, down the start, finish straight, they head down now in towards Retafilio, still wheel to wheel, Artem is just going to be denied the opportunity to fight back there, is there a bit of contact there, FETK dab side by side now with FG Pingu, he's got the inside line into Curva Grande, FG Pingu uh, now sees the Mercedes rear wing, maybe fancies another go here on the Mercedes, when he's force a lunge down the inside into turn four he had to think about it but at this early stage he's perhaps not willing to take any risks still a long 27 lap race here at Monza and DRS will be enabled on the next lap and this gaps forming now between BRT Wolf the slap bus and Sam 95 so it's perhaps this battle for fourth we're all talking about but, uh, that, that is so crucial on both BRT Wolf's end and Slap Buster's end, just being out of uh, the DRS zone just so quickly in this race. It's, it's just going to allow you to pull away if you have the pace and just not get caught up in pulling anyone along with you, as can be so common at Italy with how long that start finish straight DRS zone is, with how long the DRS is between uh, Lesbo 2 and Ascari. I mean, we see, we're seeing slipstream. Yes, we sure, a slipstream for slip Artem. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did Ooh. ride that curb it's the opposite way round to how it was a lap ago. But Artem has gone the long way round at turn two and pulls off an absolutely mind-blowing overtake without it, DRS, it, just pure slipstream, and then somehow he's got it done into turn two, not even turn one. Oh, before he has a moment, and that hard work is quickly undone. However, there's not too much to worry about, as uh, soon enough, he'll have the DRS anyway, as it's now enabled, as we see Sam95M lead this train, now three seconds behind the slap bus, but Artem now in a good position again with DRS, surely he won't try it down in towards Ascari, but he lifts off before the end of the straight. It's in a Ferrari sandwich at the moment. He's the filling in that and a big crash. And that is no longer a Ferrari sandwich uh, as it's I, Fantomassi. Oh, uh, I, I really have put the commentator's curse on him. I, I, I really hope that I wouldn't have done so. But that's got to be a safety car there, surely, with the positioning of the car. Apparently it's not. No. It's gone. <laughs> uh, that was. I, I don't, I'm not quite sure how he's done that. That would definitely need a rewatch at a later stage. But this battle for third continues. Artem gets it done again into the oh. first braking zone. Sam 95M pulling behind him. Nomad and Enrikic having a battle. Nomad up to P7 at this early phase. An update on Deer Hunter. Hasn't made any more progress at this stage, but we'd expect that to stall a little bit. Currently, he's on the medium tyres up against Alex Daegu as his direct competitor on the same strategy here. Well, it's Fantomassi. Showed brilliant qualifying pace, you know, showed his start wasn't great, to be honest, but his pace uh, wasn't really, I mean, can't really compare, but in the opening few laps, it wasn't awful, and suddenly he's in a barrier and off for an early shower. Yeah, very disappointing for him, really, just... He, he knows he's got the pace, he qualified second, he just got a poor start, got a bit bogged down the, the order and being in that Ferrari, uh, in being part of that Ferrari, I mean, 
Yeah, I, f I think you just got to be unlucky. Those, that chicane is a very difficult Ooh. one to navigate as there's another incident down there. I, I think it's no it matter to Ascari. Another victim, it seems, of the Ascari chicane. Nomad now slotting in between Alex Daegu and Deer Hunter. Deer Hunter will fancy making this move. However, Nomad is quickly saved by the DRS further in front. The slap bus still applying pressure to BRT Wolf, but perhaps not forcing an overtake at this stage. Wheel to wheel between AMG Chris and ILR Bibbin. ILR Bibbin holding on there. Nomad and Deer Hunter are going at it, uh, but not for too long though. Deer Hunter is actually quickly forced out of that one, and all of a sudden, the Alpine driver in an Alpha Tari is under pressure from a driver in an Alpine. Torito. Oh, he the taps the back of that Alpha Tauri. Unfortunately, he's not span one of the championship protagonists out there. That would have been that would have been quite uh, something. But Sam 95 up the inside at Ascari. Not often uh, you see a move tried there, despite the the long DRS zone is often a place where you can apply the pressure rather than go for an overtake but Artem quickly closing back in just by a slipstream and down the start finish straight about to reach speeds of around 217 miles per hour in the slipstream DRS open now is he going to use any overtake I don't think he needs to because the overspeed is enough for Artem to continue this battle and he's back up into third place. What a great battle this is. Oh, so give, give me more Williams and Ferrari battles every day of oh, the week. Please. <laughs> if, please. if we see that in real life right this weekend, I'd be more, more than happy. But just just seeing it right now is just a bit just a bit retro, really. A bit of a throwback to the uh, late 90s, uh, uh, 80s, around that sort of area. And Deer Hunter, uh, who's just picked up a penalty, is now being overtaken by Bortorito, who just one lap ago tapped Deer Hunter into this very chicane, the Della Roja chicane, but Bortorito runs slightly wide, keeps the position very easy to, to light up the rears there. Deer Hunter seems to be struggling a little bit, but it doesn't look like he's got any damage of, on that front wing as of now. Something I do want to highlight, just with this battle at the front, is uh, just five tens between BRC Wolf and Slapbus at the moment. And it's, it's been like that for a while, but I'm sure they're being quite tactical at the moment. Something I've quite noticed from BRC Wolf, which he seems to have improved on from previous races, is his ER, ERS management. And we can see Slapbus being getting quite close at the moment, but Slapbus has, 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 did have to use oh. quite a bit of ERS. So as, Almost three wide for a moment as the Mercedes of FTK, uh, F -E -T -K Dab, sorry, gets involved, as does FGE Pingu side by side momentarily between Pingu and Artem Pingu now with a penalty, of course. And that's probably why he's getting in on the action because he's got a lot to gain now in this race with a very costly penalty. Definitely, if a safety car comes out, that's for sure. And but don't know nice to see the bat. Yes, Dynamo Dan, that's at the first corner. He, he seems to have completely cooked his tyres. Does look it. That might be his race just completely done and dusted unless there's a miracle there. Oh, and he's cut the chicane for good measure as well. Is there any damage on that Red Bull? I think there is on the left-hand side. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on. He yeah, might have a technical wing, issue yeah. of some sort. He's all over the place as well. But all BRT Wolf, out for BRT Wolf a dummy. Uh, yeah. Bit cheeky there, but it's all allowed in regulation. And here we go again. The battle for P3. Artem gaining, gaining, gaining all the time. Pingu getting involved as well. Will he try to force it? The same way as Artem, Artem gets it done round the outside of the first corner. He's, called, uh, he's pulled sorry, a few of those brilliant moves so far in this race as well. FG Pingu, who has plenty of ERS at his disposal, gets on the green button. And 
sticks behind the Ferrari for the time being. Still it rages on, on lap 8 of 27. But I've got to commend the racing of Pingu at the moment as being very sensible and very calculated at the moment. He's not allowing himself to see the gap and force the move when he knows it's just going to slow himself down and potentially allow TK Dab to really get himself even closer to this fight oh. than he needs to be. And there was some miscommunication of some sort there as Sam 95F1 backed out from making a move on Artem, but in doing so, Pingu is slow to react and runs into the back of the Ferrari. I didn't see anything come off the front wing. If that is the case, he's very lucky. That was high speed. That would easily, that would easily rip up uh, both front, front wheels in uh, real life. I'm starting to figure out to compl compliment anyone just because I'm going to curse them otherwise. Oh, and again, Pingu looks for a three wide moment. This time it's Sam 95 F1 re overtaking Artem into the first corner, and Artem's Ooh. gone off completely. Lights up the rears on the exit, and suddenly the battle for P3 is no longer in his hands. He's got work to do now. In sixth place after that mistake. So easy to just get a, too, a slightly too much wheel spin as you get the power down. Coming out of such from such a slow corner, just get if you get the power down just ever so slightly, you lose control of the cars. We see yellow flags at the down of Russell Chicane. It's an Alpha Tower. It's AME Duran AM, and edited form. Yeah, definitely a collision of some sort there. Very, very easy that that could occur into Curva de la Roche. I was watching uh, the PC race on uh, Sunday night as well. There was a collision. Uh, well, there was a moment there. Um, between Tino Naukarainen and Ika Bauner. Bauner? Bauner? I don't know. I think I messed it up on Monday night. I've messed it up again, but still a irrelevant reference is now. FG Pingu is the one going for third place. He hasn't really had an opportunity with two cars in his way, but he's coming at the Ferrari now with a penalty to his name. He goes to the left-hand side and far before the braking zone, FG Pingu is up to third place in this race. As well as a lot of teammates as well, having just got uh, along with AMG Chris, uh, being the first to pull the trigger on the pit stops this race. Lap 10, maybe slightly too early, evidently very slightly just too early for the rest of these drivers, but we've seen earlier in, uh, in other tiers as well. So, and it definitely can be done to the mediums till the end. Absolutely, there was an uh, undercut attempt in uh, challenges last night that seem to pay off and probably the same tonight. I believe it's PlayStation tonight, but I haven't watched it for obvious reasons. Slap bus now two tenths behind the race leader, BRT Wolf. And Wolf, if he wants to reignite his championship charge, he's doing a good job so far. I think this is the closest he's been to the back of BRT Wolf at this point in the track of all race. So could we, could we see an, an overtake happen here so long as the pit stop doesn't happen for either of these guys? And it doesn't. I just want to say, I just want to say a thing about these these guys is uh, ERS as well. We've got a safety car. This could be crucial. Oh, not a safety car. I meant to say a yellow flag, but there's the safety car. What perfect timing <laughs> to... for Sam. <laughs> I seem to have indirectly called it, and now Sam 95F1 leads a train of cars into the pit lane, and this blows, and this blows things well out of proportion for BRT Wolf and the slap bus. They might not be looking good here. Now, and also what now what was looking like maybe a bit of a savvy undercut from uh, uh, AMG Chris and Nomad. Now looking like a complete and utter blunder, just just by virtue of complete and utter luck on their end, being ro just rotten to the core. And and I will take back what I said about uh, BRT Wolf and the slap bus. Because you need about 19 seconds here to be at risk. There's a gap of 25 seconds at the moment, and remember that's a lot less under the safety car as well. So actually, although thing, uh, things won't really change at all, really, if uh, the top four were to pit, Harjay may well inherit the lead here, though. So that's going to be interesting. 
if he is going to lead the safety car restart, but there is a no-brainer call here that BRT Wolf and the Slap Bus will head into the pit lane. BRT Wolf and the Slap Bus. The Slap Bus obviously is entitled to get close in the pit lane. He can overtake uh, when he's um, in that white line scenario, but uh, no need to risk a speeding penalty. A duel between the pit crews. Medium tyres go on for both of them. The Slap Bus lags a bit there but it, it's as it was BRT Wolf ahead of the slap bus under our first safety car period of the race because I mean, it's, it is such a it's such a perfect time for the soft runners but a terrible one for the medium runners it is just it's ever so slightly too early if you're the likes of RJ or Deer Hunter or Alex Daigu you wanted this to come out about five, five laps later you didn't want this, you, even if it was just two laps later, after everyone had completed their green lap, uh, green flag running uh, pit stops, just to save a bit of time, it, it couldn't have come at a worse moment, because either you have to sacrifice yourself onto the hard tyres, which really aren't that quick at all around Italy, or go soft tyres, which will be fast initially, and you'll get them protected under the safety car, but will be crying for help come the end of the race lap 12 of 27 almost at the halfway point and it kind of feels like a race start building up again uh, we have seen medium runners go on to softs will they make it I'm not I'm not too sure maybe they'll pit at the end of this lap and go back onto mediums if they have a, a fresh set I, think I don't the best think thing softs from here I think the best thing that could happen for the people who have just put on the softs is to have another safety car period eventually, like I say at around lap 20 or so, just so they can just slap on another pair of softs and just try and go for a little sprint race towards the end as Don Madan cuts the corner there. And BRT Wolf getting a bit impatient with Bert My uh, virtual Burt Meinlander there. <laughs> Absolutely, in the in the red Mercedes looks a bit different again this year. It's so it's a funky safety car this year. It's got like grooves everywhere, and it. it's very sp <laughs> it's very really sporty. I, 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 I sounded very Jeremy Clarkson there. It is. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, I feel like it's the sort of safety car that you'd absolutely enjoy to drive. So I think it's fitting that you're an old Jeremy yeah. Clarkson now. It's, it's just it's just it's just a great looking car. The cars in red this year in Formula 1 are just absolutely gorgeous. That Ferrari. Oh, oh can't wait goodness. to uh, see that under the lights this weekend. Also, not to not to forget IndyCar, MotoGP, F2, F3. You know, you've <laughs> just got a lot on this weekend. I'm just plugging every motorsport on the planet. Yeah, if, if, I mean, if you're a race fan, this if you're a racing fan, it's a great weekend to... to to be alive, it's just you. You you have you have the uh, Formula Three and Formula Two happen on the Saturday and early in the Sunday. And then you have the F1 and then MotoGP at the same time, which you can maybe just catch up on. And then you got IndyCar later on in the evening. It's it's just brilliant. Couldn't agree more. Will we go racing on this lap? Not too <laughs> sure. Right. It'll, it'll be touch and go as to whether Dynamo Dan and Nomad are able to join up. On the back, on the back of them, because usually I find that if you're, if it's once every driver's just connected together. Yeah. Even if it's slightly past the uh, second sector point, I think we might see the notification in just a second potentially. But I think, I think we might be seeing Nomad potentially going a bit too, a bit slowly here, just to try and get one extra lap, because we see him with the soft tyres. He's probably trying to protect his soft yeah, tires. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think he's done that on purpose. That's smart. I, absolutely. I, I, I think he knows that if he was to go with a big... Oh, no. Oh. Well, it's, it's not oh, worked out. That's late. <laughs> that is, that so is late. late. Wow, that's controversy here. As we get to get underway. It's very late now. indeed. BRT Wolf gets us back underway and weaves oh, to the course, right hand side I'm immediately. Out. He's under so much pressure from the get-go again. And Monza, FG Pingu having a look. He's not going to get it done on this occasion. 
pretty much the top six as it was side by side between Harjay and Enrique on the exit here the other McLaren of Alex Daegu looking to get involved here and the Haas dropping down two places to two McLarens on this safety car restart and the soft tyres working wonders we'll see what the McLarens do from here of course it's, it's all about getting the positions now 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 for the two for the two McLaren drivers because if they don't get the moves done as soon as they possibly can they're just going to be stuck in DRS trains and they're just going to have these tyres just wear out quicker and quicker compared to the mediums and they're just going to lose all pace by the end of the race. The slap bus now needs to do what he was doing in the early stage of the race which was lose a lot of time at the start he's almost lost a second already and he's used a lot of ERS on this lap as well so a very impressive restart lap from BRT Wolf as he looks to solidify his second race win of the season and that riposte we were mentioning a little bit earlier no points since his second place finish in Russia whether I'm allowed to say that anymore, I don't know. Um, but obviously, that was part of back-to-back -back P2 finishes following his win in the opening round of the season in Belgium. It's been a long time coming for BRT Wolf. Can he hold on? Switch your position between the two McLarens as, ironically, just as we uh, expect them to be making positions, they're losing a lot of time to the top six at this stage. Um, I mean, I think that's only natural given the, the nature of having to overtake some of the cars already. I'm sure both of them will catch up, and if not, they'll work together to make sure that they use the DRS to be at their advantage to be able to catch up. So I wouldn't say it's too much of a worry from just yet. BRT Wolf has a 7 tenth advantage at the moment. The slap bus starting to reel him in ever so slightly, but it has taken another dump of the battery. But the benefit of that is he can start saving when DRS is enabled on this next lap. He won't have it down in towards turn one, but he'll start receiving the treatment into the Ascari chicane. Pure slipstream now for the slap bus. And even more ERS to go with it, perhaps, to defend himself from Pingu at the moment and Pingu is doing a good job of pulling away from Sam95 at the moment. It was at about a second at one point but very quickly it uh, falls to about half a second again so well it's fluctuating a lot in this pack at the moment and McLaren's starting to gain on ILR Bibbin so a lot to look out for. That's a slap of a race from Pingu's teammate as well. I mean, I mean, I know this is unequal performance, but it shows that Aston Martin do have a good lineup here. I mean, P Pingu yeah, hasn't, hasn't had the best luck this season. I don't think there's been a lot of drivers that's been like that, where they've, they've, they've got pace, but they've not been able to properly show just based on getting caught up in things and just making small mistakes that are down to luck. And Ping, Ping is not one of these been one of these drivers so far this season that I've necessarily seen. Oh, as JJ! Being, oh, wow! Ascari. Is that a second safety car potentially? I do hope I not. I haven't called it this time. No, I I, I, I called it at the uh, I, I, I I thought maybe that it was the same place as the Espanto Massi incident, and yeah, that didn't yeah. end up getting called out as a safety car, which I was surprised by at the time, and I'm still surprised now. We're just with the location of the crash. And the McLarens have both got ahead of ILR Bibbin. And their next target is FETK Dab. And again, questions lie over whether those tyres can last. Meanwhile, back to the slap bus. Now forcing BRT Wolf into using some of his ERS. In fact, he's a lot closer. In fact, perhaps the closest he's been all race in his pursuit for his fourth victory of the season. And it would be some statement with the Deer Hunter now down in P9 to his championship claim this season to go off to the desert next week. Here he comes. Just such close racing here. You just you just see the all, all these drivers just in for the win here. 
if, if Pingu's if Pingu's penalty ends up getting removed potentially, because that could well have been a Ooh. it could well be one of the, those things where he gets done for all in one incident. So if they, if that happens to be the case, Pingu's certainly in for a shout. Sam ninety five certainly in for a shout. Potentially Alex Dagu and RJ if they're able to get into this train as quickly as possible. TK Dab is in for one. As we see now a move. Oh here he comes. Flatbus. Wow he's, he's finally got it. After 18 laps he's took the lead of the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Sorry, sorry for interrupting you there. It was well, just very shocking that he actually committed to that move and BRT Wolf may fancy his chances of going back at the championship leader but he doesn't on this occasion now it's BRT Wolf's turn perhaps to uh, save some of that ERS which he's been forced into using these last couple of laps I don't think BRT Wolf is too concerned at this stage although it just doesn't seem to be on it just seems to have had a drop in momentum on this lap so maybe a crucial time then for the slap bus to get that done here comes BRT Wolf the overspeed again evident I do want to mention now the McLarens on the softer compound of tyre have now joined in the party now on this in this train here as we see FETK -E Dab have a bit of a moment there outside of the exit of Ascari. Uh, it's going to keep a position for the time being but it doesn't make be a matter of time given the speed of the mechanical grip advantage of the McLarens behind. But something I do want to mention as well, just as we watch the, as we're going to watch the, the reverse move now, as BRT Wolf takes on uh, Slapbus. Uh, last lap, when Slapbus took the lead of the race oh. for the first time, uh, safety car. And it is the fifth crash on track, this time from Nomad, and it's our second safety car of the evening. And in fact, this might help the soft runners, because. They can now save their tyres to their heart's content under the safety car and maybe, just maybe, have a chance of getting to the end here. Artem picking up a drive through penalty. He's 35 seconds down in last place. I don't think he's bothered about that at this I point. I think he might be retiring. But, but something, yeah, I wanna, a bit lonely. something I do want to mention that I find quite interesting. Uh, in my own little weird way, that when Slapbus made the first move uh, for the lead on BRT Wolf's race, it was right at the same time as his teammate Dynamo Dan was retiring from the race. So very mixed fortunes for Red Bull there in that moment in time. And obviously things have shaped up and run, but it's going to be. I think it's going to be interesting to see if. I don't necessarily think they will. I think they will do what you were saying. Uh, on the soft and just allow them to be protected but we'll be interested to see if they do just decide to pit onto soft and like fresh compound. No, yes they are. Oh, BRT Wolf. BRT Wolf goes for it. He's the only one to do so. No, he's not. Sam95 F1 follows him in. Oh my. As does ILR Bibbin. Has he now, this is triggering. Or has he just come up with something really genius here? We've got eight laps to find out. I've, I've got on the well, 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 well. Oh, he's only he's only down to P7. I think I think they've got this right, you know. P7 with three drivers in front of him with penalties. Realistically, that's P4, but he's got overtakes to do as well. I mean, on we saw... Deer Hunter, who uh, he, he, Deer Hunter will make it difficult. Oh, absolutely. I mean, a six-lap old softs. I mean, you're gonna you you know. BRT Wolf's tyres are going to be fresher, they're going to be faster. But it's going to be just how long can Deer Hunter keep behind BRT Wolf? Obviously, in this, it's going to be his teammate, so I don't think he's going to be putting up too much of a fight against BRT Wolf. But against Sam95, just to deny the Ferrari man any chance of winning at, the ho at his team's home Grand Prix. It's, it's, well, it's, it's so much intrigue in these last few laps here. It's going to be absolutely insane racing. And we did see last week that the drivers that went more aggressive and made better use of the safety cars were the ones that paid out, uh, paid out big time. And the, likes who, and the drivers that went a bit more conservative, like Slapbus last week, were the ones to miss out. So, will history repeat itself this week? Will Slapbus fall down the order? Will Pingu fall down the order this week? Like... 
They did last. We'll have to see. Pingu, I mean, he won't be satisfied with this safety car at all. He's got a penalty. He's got two rapid McLarens behind him. And so his podium is really at risk at the moment. It was looking, it was looking quite good for a period of time in this race. Um, but now, no longer. Unless he has grounds to appeal it. Um, in which case, he won't worry. But I mean, you can, you can great at the moment. You can never be 100% sure, can you? Uh, no, you can't. But as well, I'm, I think something that will be uh, comforting Pingu is just knowing that he has he, he was unmatching the pace of Snapbus and BRT Wolf in that last stint. And the, the, driver, the driver that's the most threat to either of uh, Snapbus or Pingu is all is down in p7 and in league racing terms it's not exactly that much but it might be just enough time to allow them to pull away and get the, to get a decent result out of this but maybe not i want to i wonder if we'll go in on this lap i we think might, it might and be. that will leave six laps for brt wolf to reinstate a victory here in a way Hitted from the lead of the race. Oh, and Bibbin. There is no way he's spun under a safety car. I, I, I think I'm... he has. Oh, George Russell did it in real life. I mean... Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, that's, very, that's... that's a very curious moment there. He's, he's, hit, he's broken his front wing. I mean, I've seen it in Tier 3 this season. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's surprising how common it actually is. I mean, I've done it myself, but mm. I'm no more than than sort of tier maybe nine standards in WR at the minute. But the slap bus now oh. under the world of pressure with BRT Wolf in P7, who he's been chasing, who he's been fighting for so quickly. long in this race. He goes early, he goes quickly, does the slap bus, and now he's finally... Oh, he almost loses it on the exit! FG Pingu oh, overtakes can... him before the line, so we'll have to give that one back. Chaos on the restart immediately, and now Pingu in the slipstream. Dumping his ERS, trying to make this work from the get-go. Not quite. What did you see? Uh, he, I, just, I just saw completely just on the power ever so early, but he managed to just save it so well. And it's just the worst timing for Pingu because if that happens just half a second later, he gets uh, into P1 there. It's, oh, my heart breaks for him. And we we already see down the order, BRT Wolf into P6, Deer Hunter yes. obviously letting him go. Yes, he, he did pull off a really good move to be fair, had to do it the hard way into Telm 1. But he made the most of those fresh ties. I think he's on for something rather extraordinary here. BRT Wolf. Perhaps a strategic miracle as he slipstreams FETK Dab. Will he make a move into Ascari? Yes, he will. Goes down the inside as oh, Ascari. Oh, there's oh. contact between the two. That's Fortunately, very, very close. Fortunately, FETK Dab doesn't come off too badly from that. That could have been worse. And we could have potentially been talking a penalty to BRT Wolf, who makes another move. This time into Carver, Al Carver Alvareto, so sorry, pace. around the final corner. What grip he has at the moment. What commitment he's showing to regain the lead of this race. Currently in fifth, side by side for P4. On the right hand side, wheel banging. Down the inside he goes into turn one and yeah, Harjay's taken to the escape road, picks up a three second time penalty for good measure. BRT Wolf up to P4 with some of the bravest driving I've ever seen. It's absolutely phenomenal, Joe. It's just... Oh my god! He's... Oh my he's... Wow. Way too... Like he's... Some... Some would call it... Oh, Dear driving. Hunter. Just... Dear Hunter has spun. Off. Oh, no. And that is massive for this championship. The slap bus currently out in front will extend a 57 point gap over Deer Hunter as it stands with BRT Wolf set to overtake Deer Hunter at the moment as it stands and set to overtake Sam 95 F1. So gaining two positions. Oh, no! oh my oh, word! No! Oh, that's the second rig in the moment. No! 
the oh, commentator's no. curse. I do it too often. I do not believe it, Samuel. I do it too often. The commentator's curse has meant oh. that BRT Wolf... It's affected this man to Massey earlier in this race. It's now affected BRT Wolf. Alex Dave is now the biggest challenger for slap buses win now. Oh, and if you I don't that, believe it. Oh, that is... It, um, I feel so bad for BRT Wolf. It's going to be another race. He doesn't score points. And he does not deserve that at all. He's arguably been second or even, he's at definitely at times best driver this season. But for him to be so, it's, so relatively far down the championship, it's, it's, it's just so disappointing as we see Pingu there overshoot the Denver Roger Chicane and have to take uh, avoiding action. Oh my oh. <laughs> oh, I can't, my heart can't take this. <laughs> It went from being some of the finest display of driving, some of the most aggressive. You know, he wanted it so badly, he took that gamble. He knew he could pay it off. And now he knew you, it could pay off. You, you've just got to think now, if he, if he stays on the mediums, if he stays on the mediums, he had the track position to slap bus. Uh, yeah, he didn't need to do that. Does it? Does he stay in the lead? Is it, it, you've got I mean, when, when something like that happens, you can't help but think of a hypothetical. The only thing you can really do now is just go for the fastest lap of the race. Which I mean, I don't know if he really needs to be going for that because it currently belongs to Nomad in the Aston Martin. He won't be taking any points away, but maybe if there's just some safety car this lap, he might. You know, he, that's a complete. That's going to have to be some luck, but. Could happen. And what a moment this could be. Alex Daegu, with two and a half laps to go, is the one challenging the slap bus, the one in his DRS, the one looking to take his very first win of the season, and in fact, overtake BRT Wolf in the championship. And in fact, oh, I don't, I don't think he'll quite get Deer Hunter if he was to win here, but he's announcing himself into this fight for vice champion. Um I have to say, Alex Daegu. I have to say, Daegu has to have, for me anyway, get driver of the day. Coming from a, what was ostensibly a poor qualifying, to be up in P2 now is nothing short of excellent. It, safe car came up as a poor time for him, having started on the mediums, but he's made it work. Even with uh, the soft tyre runners, I mean, yes, you can make, make the argument that if BRT Wolf doesn't spin it, he's in P2 at this moment in time. Still six tenths. Six tenths is the difference with two laps to go. Twelve positions gained for Alex Dago. Twelve for Harjay as well. Both McLarens doing some rather remarkable business with their choice of strategy in the first safety car periods. AVS fan as well. Oh, major over ten, 10 positions. And there we go. Sam 95 F1. If he was set to take the podium by virtue of penalties he's got it on the racetrack now for good measure really important overtake for sam 95 f1 that eases the pressure ever so slightly brt wolf snatching the fastest lap away from was it nomad that had it before i'm not i'm not even quite sure at uh, this point i don't yeah, think that's been was, the yeah. biggest concern now sam 95 might be a dark horse even with one and a half laps to go to win this race he's got the fresher tires He's got, he's got the distance, really. Only six tenths behind slap bus going into a scar, uh, in Scari. Well, he's gone past two yep. cars into one corner. You might be right. I've completely forgot about Sam 95 F1's tyre situation, oh. which means we are in for a thrilling final lap with Sam 95 F1 on, chasing on. down Alex Daegu, chasing down the slap bus. Can Alex Daegu take his first win of the season? Can Sam 95 F1 take his first win of the WOR Tier 5 season? Here comes Alex Daegu. He's got nothing Leave left in about. terms of energy. Sam 95 F1 does. He pulls to the left hand side. How big could this overtake be? Round the outside he goes of Alex Daegu. Oh, and now he gets it's just it done. What a move. 
He had to take to the curb and he had to slide through. But Sam 95 F1 denies Alex Daigu the chance at this moment in time unless he can slipstream and dive back past him at the Della Roger chicane, which is unlikely because Alex Daigu is ridden of his battery deployment and realistically he's got no chance it's a straight fight now between sam 95 f1 and the slap bus for victory in the italian grand prix the slap bus already a winner at emila this season sam 95 f1 his best result being second last time out in canada he's gaining 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 is it going to be enough no it isn't but has he got the grip through Ascari to make a move into Curb Rabaretto. Oh, he's got a great run. He's deploying the battery. Surely not. What a famous Ferrari win. This could be at Monza. They're wheel to wheel into the final corner. Who's going to come out on top? The slap bus sends it. He goes in deep to run his rival out wide. And he's done it perfectly. Sam 95 F1 within the limits. Forcing a photo finish. Oh my God. Oh. What? Oh, oh my, my word. So close. The slap bus by 0.032 of a second defended oh so perfectly and wins his fourth race of the season. What a champion's defence that was. Surely there's no stopping him now. I am lost for words. I, I'm, oh. I have not seen a better finish to a race. That is unbelievable driving. I thought that was... Sam 95's there, <laughs> but the technology doesn't lie, it is slap bus by, slap bus by 32 thousandths of a second. And That's better that... than any tier 3 race I've seen. No, I'm joking, <laughs> there's been brilliant tier 3 races, I I would not uh, say that. There is, there's been excellent races up and down WOR this season, that is absolutely one of them. What a race. Oh, that needs, what to get a race. Oh, that needs to get posted about. So Someone clip that on the Twitch and just oh, I've post, got it. It, Don't you post it around every social media that you can. That's going to get like at least 50 on upvotes on it. <laughs> That's un oh, my goodness. I can't just can stop gushing about how incredible of a finish that was. Of course, you can. Oh, these interviews are going to be something. Wow! Wow! Oh, wow! Just go. <laughs> Let's see if the slap bus is able to join us, because in in that case, we've got a brilliant interview on our hands, and we've been going for how long? Over an hour and a half, but it's been fully worth it. A restart to go with it. Like I say, every, every stream, I just I just say that these guys don't know how to put on a boring race, and we see that once again in Italy. If the slap bus doesn't join us, we'll get started very shortly. I understand due to due to the uh, the small delays uh, this evening. Uh, I understand, but I think we should jump straight in with Alex Daigu. Alex, well done on your podium. I'm sure you were hanging on for dear life with those worn soft compound of tyres. What made you want to stay out and what made you uh, so hungry to try and get that victory, although it wasn't to be? Um, what made me stay out? Um, good question, because I think there was like four or five of them in front of me, so I knew they'd all pit, so I just stayed out just to get a bit of track position. Um, I think it worked out, to be fair, because we had a quite, we had, I had about three cars behind me that didn't pit, so they had to negotiate. And then um, British Racing Team Wolf tried to dive bomb me at uh, Scari, and he died. And that was interesting. I don't think that was my fault, personally. So, I I, bit yeah, of, if, bit uh, if I didn't say anything on it... <laughs> So, I think uh, he was a bit late. He tried it once. He's probably he's probably again. fuming at me, but uh, I don't think I did anything wrong personally. And uh, the penguin as well, um, Pingu Pingu the penguin, and for an interesting move on the last corner and last lap and spell out on the on my side. I didn't. I didn't. 
I didn't even notice he yeah. spun it, to be fair. <laughs> Considering the photo pod, finish we... happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but he said that was his fault, so that's right. So I did kill two people, but I don't think they were both my fault sort of thing. I don't think either were my fault, so I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. After qualifying, like, 14th in Tier 5, I mean, you know. <laughs> I thought it'd be a lot worse. <laughs> it's all right, yeah. You move up into third place now in the championship. You came into this fifth. Um, would you be happy staying there for the remainder of the season, or do you want to push on, try and get P2? Uh, because maybe P1's a bit out of reach. <laughs> yeah, I think P1 was out of reach after about three races, to be honest. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind to be P3. I think that's quite a decent position. I'll be happy on that, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Samuel, I mean, it's your tear at the end of the day. Uh, any questions for Mr. Addicts Daegu? Of course. I mean, I just, just want to ask, um, do, you, do you think uh, you've shown the pace, really, for a lot of this season that you can fight at the top of the table? Do you, are you confident that in the remaining rounds of the season that you'll be able to actually to be able to get that win in the end? Oof, that's, a, that's a big one. A win. Um... Hmm, I'm a confident. <laughs> Maybe at Bahrain, like that's the next one. Like, I should be okay. I should be quite good at that because I'm on the controller. Um, but most of the others, I've like I can't really remember how many, but most of the others, I've just been nowhere near a win at any point. I've been like third or fifth, but like I haven't properly thought I was going to win. Uh, so maybe Bahrain, but other than that, I'm probably not. Unless, unless something random happens, I guess. Like a day safety car thing. Okay? <laughs> of course, and I mean with with this tier, I mean you can, you, I mean you never know when safety cars are going to come yeah, out. That's two true. races in a row has been like chaos. <laughs> came as a bat, as a result of the safety car. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean people can just spin off like 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 the Russia one, for example, just spun out for no reason under the safety car. But it's, it's things like that can happen, not like a two lap sprint, everyone on the softs, you know, I don't know, yeah. But if there's no safety cars, I don't think on pure pace I'd win much, because like, my qualifying is quite bad. Like, I was a second off pole, and like, miles down. So I, I'll probably need to do a better quality lap, and then, if there's no safety cars, maybe at Bahrain, I, I think that's probably the best shot, I'd say. Definitely. Sorry, I've waffled on a bit. <laughs> no, it's fine. Like, <laughs> it's we've, fine. We've, we've been going for ages. <laughs> um, I do think we should perhaps move on to Sam 95 yeah. F1, who, by the way, I'm pretty sure perhaps everyone up and down the tier is gutted because losing a race by 0.03 of a second or however stupidly close it was is it's a gut-wrenching feeling. I mean, what a battle. What a brilliant attempt you put on, Sam, to... To make that overtake, you found the grip around the outside. The slap bus forced you there, but unfortunately, the finish line came just too soon. How are you feeling after that? Um, yeah, a little disappointed. I mean, I, I didn't really know like what was going to happen when I pitted. I thought like if I stayed out, I might just get like swallowed up. So I like went over to soft thinking that um, that would probably be like to conserve like a third or a fourth, but yeah, I didn't expect to be actually battling with him for the win there. So that sort of, it was almost sort of like a bonus in a way that I was sort of in that fight at the end. But yeah, to see it be like so close and then, um, yeah, just quite, just, just about miss out was a bit disappointing, but I mean, it, it, it was pretty epic to be part of, and I imagine for like you guys watching it was as well. So uh, yeah, it was still very enjoyable at least. Absolutely. Um, and to be honest, you had to uh, take to the curb at uh, turn two to, to force the overtake so you could be on the back of the slap bus in the first place. What was what was the reaction making the move on uh, Alex and having that uh, nearly moment and then just the adrenaline on the final lap? Yeah, it, it didn't quite go as cleanly as I would have hoped because um, I think I did lose a bit of time doing that, but... I think just if I was going to have any kind of chance to actually try and slap to the end there, I had to sort of try and go for it. But uh, yeah, it's just sort of, yeah, just a very tense final up there trying to 
just make sure that every sort of apex was hit. And uh, yeah, it just wasn't quite enough at the end, but uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Samuel, any questions for Sam? That sounds weird. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and I just want to know I'm not biased towards you just because of his shadows. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I just like this mark. This race here marks your fourth podium in a row after having a pretty slow start to the season. I think it's safe to say. Just what? How have you kind of changed how you approach races to be able to have achieved that, those, like such consistency in the last few races? I don't think a lot has really changed. I think I've just had a bit, maybe a bit more misfortune in some of those other ones. Like I think Imola and Russia could have been strong results, but things didn't quite go uh, to plan in those. I mean, I have, I think, been a little bit more cautious like in some battles since then, just trying to like not throw away potential good position. Because I think that did kind of happen a little bit in Imola and Russia, where I, I maybe fought positions I didn't really need to. And ended up sort of paying the price for it a little bit. So I think maybe that a little bit, but yeah, I think just a good fortune, I think, has turned things around for me in these last few races. Thank you very much. And just, again, just to lose so like so closely, and uh, again, I'm going to pass the same question on to you as I did with Alex. Just, I, I, do you feel confident that you'll be able to eventually work your way onto the top step of the podium later on this season? Uh, I hope so. Um, but I don't know, it's going it's to be quite tough. I think, like, in these two races, well, half a second, I did, like, have some good fortune in both of them. So I think maybe need sort of, like, a little bit of that, but just, like, that little bit extra, because I think, um, sort of the same with Alex, really, I don't really have, like, qualifying pace. So I don't think I'm really going to be, like, challenging for like pole positions or front rows or anything so I think just like trying to like play a bit of a smarter race and like a bit of luck on the way that sort of if it's gonna happen I think that'll be yeah I'll, I would do it I guess. There certainly seems to be the uh, theme I've seen to see from your races especially recently just even if there's not necessarily the best qualifying position you work yourself up the order in the coming laps just by staying out of trouble really I think that's everything really from me personally but I don't know about you Joe Joseph, oh so. yeah um, I, I think I need I think I need to go to bed um yeah that was that was quite an ending and uh great to be great to uh take over tier five for tonight um certainly uh got us talking about just league racing in general in the uh in the the time we had waiting but uh yeah I think it's time to uh wrap it up then another win for slap bus that's win number uh well someone's accidentally duplicated tonight's result onto Bahrain so apparently he's won Bahrain as well but well, um, I wouldn't be surprised. yeah the, it wouldn't be surprised the, the spreadsheet ahead of ourselves not quite sure that's correct apparently the slap bus has a 57 point lead in the championship and has now won five races. But that is not the case. Find out if he does do that, though, next week at Bahrain. Um, but big thanks from myself and Samuel for watching this evening. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you very soon.